Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, recently I revisited the old GeForce GTX 1080 to see how NVIDIA's 2016 high-end Pascal GPU was stacking up in 2022. And because the Radeon RX 6600 is the only GPU we're recommending right now, given that it can be had for as little as $260 US and we have new GPUs incoming. So anyway, that's a whole different story, but we thought it'd be interesting to see how the GTX 1080 compares to the RX 6600. The comparison though wasn't a favorable one as the new mid-range Radeon GPU was 20% faster on average at 1080p and 14% faster at 1440p. So while it was impressive to see that after six years, the GeForce GTX 1080 is still quite a capable product, it's not exactly something you should be on the lookout for on the secondhand market, given they generally sell for around $200 US, so about what you'd pay for a used RX 6600. This got me thinking, how does the new GeForce RTX 3050 compare to the old GTX 1080? And evidently quite a lot of you were thinking the same thing, as the recent Vega 64 vs GTX 1080 video saw numerous comments asking for a comparison with the RTX 3050, so let's do that. Now to quickly recap, the GTX 1080 was released back in 2016 for $600 US before officially dropping to $500 US the following year. That means five years later, the RTX 3050 should have arrived at half the price. And I say should have because according to the official MSRP, it's meant to be a $250 US product. Truth be told though, the 3050 was never really available at that price and even today costs at least $300 US. So half the price of the original GTX 1080 MSRP. So let's go with that. So after six long years and multiple GPU generations, can 2020's $300 GeForce GPU beat 2016's $600 GPU? On paper, it does appear to be quite an interesting matchup. Now, comparing the CUDA core count is obviously pretty pointless given the difference in architectures, though they do both pack 2,560. But the GTX 1080 has 100% more texture mapping and render output units. The 1080 might only use GDDR5X memory, whereas the RTX 3050 moves to the more modern GDDR6 memory. But with half the memory bus width, the budget Ampere GPU actually has less memory bandwidth at 224 gigabytes per second, opposed to 320 gigabytes per second, so a massive 30% reduction there. Processing power though is roughly the same, and the RTX 3050 does benefit from hardware support for technologies such as async compute and proper DirectX 12 support. And of course, by using the latest architecture, NVIDIA is actively prioritizing driver optimization, whereas Pascal is very much at best an afterthought. All of that said, I am keen to see how they compare, so let's get to it. For testing, we're using the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory, along with the latest available display drivers. Resizable bar has been enabled for all 50 games tested at 1080p and 1440p, and we'll take a close look at the data for about a dozen of the titles tested before jumping into the usual breakdown graphs. Please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. All right, let's get into it. Starting with the Hitman 3 results, we find that the RTX 3050 was 18% faster at 1080p and 21% faster at 1440p, so some seriously large performance gains there for the newer Ampere GPU. That said, this was a very poor title for the GTX 1080 as it performed very poorly relative to the RX 6600 and Vega 64. So I'm not expecting these margins to be the norm. That said, another bad title for Pascal was Warhammer 3. Here the GTX 1080's performance is pretty horrible, averaging just 42 FPS at 1440p. That meant the RTX 3050 was roughly 50% faster at both tester resolutions, and I believe this is in part due to the lack of async compute support at the hardware level. Next we have War Thunder, which is an old game that is still very popular today, and as such it expect a fairly good level of optimization for Pascal. That certainly does appear to be the case, as the GTX 1080 was almost 30% faster at both of the tester resolutions. Moving on to the Rainbow Six Siege results, we find competitive performance between these two GeForce GPUs, and both are certainly more than fast enough to enjoy this title, even in a competitive setting. The 1% lows for the newer RTX 3050 were more consistent, but overall the experience was still good using the GTX 1080. Another game where the RTX 3050 performs well relative to the GTX 1080 is Cyberpunk 2077, 
delivering around 10% more performance at both the tester resolutions. I suspect driver support for Pascal is at a decent level for this massively hyped release, and instead the GTX 1080's shortcomings here are probably down to the aging Pascal architecture. Death Stranding is a few years old at this point, so the GTX 1080 wasn't that old when it was released. Therefore, it's not that unsurprising to see the RTX 3050 being outpaced here, with the 1080 enjoying a 15% performance advantage at 1080p, and then an almost 20% advantage at 1440p. F122, as the name suggests, is a 2022 release, and yet the GTX 1080 still managed to get the better of the RTX 3050, offering 12% greater performance at 1080p and 9% at 1440p. So that's a very impressive result for the old Pascal GPU, and F1 fans who snapped one up five to six years ago would no doubt be very pleased by these results, should they still be using it to this day. And we see here that for race sim fans, the GTX 1080 is still very much live and kicking and certainly more capable than the much newer RTX 3050, as it was 14% faster at 1080p, and then a rather massive 19% faster at 1440p. So a clear victory here for the old Pascal GPU, and it's a shame to see that what really is a modern $300 US GeForce GPU struggling to take out the old gun. Okay, so Halo Infinite is a new game, and it's an example where the RTX 3050 is able to fight the GTX 1080, beating it by a very slim margin at 1080p, and then basically matching it at 1440p. So a pretty solid result here for the new Ampere budget GPU, if you can call a $300 US GPU a budget GPU. The Hunt Showdown results are interesting. Both GPUs delivered the same 101 FPS at 1080p, yet despite that, the Pascal GPU took over at 1440p, offering quite a substantial performance gain, 17% more frames, and I'd put this difference down to the memory bandwidth. We've seen a few times now that the GTX 1080 fares better at the higher resolution, and given that it does enjoy 30% greater memory bandwidth, that does make sense. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is another classic, so unsurprisingly the GTX 1080 performs well here. The 1080p results look a bit system limited, but once we get to 1440p it becomes more GPU limited, and again, the superior bandwidth of the GTX 1080 gives it a clear advantage, in part allowing for up to 29% greater performance. Crikey, what has gone wrong for the RTX 3050 here? The God of War performance is tragic. Just 60 FPS at 1080p, making the GTX 1080 57% faster and then 78% faster at 1440p. Given this is a brand new title, at least for the PC, you'd probably have expected the RTX 3050 to do a lot better and at least match the old GTX 1080, but apparently not. Last up, we have Forza Horizon 5, and this one is a tie at both tester resolutions. The GTX 1080 was a few frames faster, but really it's close enough to call a tie, and both GPUs delivered highly playable performance using the high quality preset, so a good result overall. It's kind of hard to say how these GPUs compared based on the sample of games that we just looked at. Sometimes the RTX 3050 was much faster, other times it was much slower, and it seemed like half the time they were about the same, so potentially similar overall. Still, we have tested 50 games in total, so let's check out the full breakdown. Starting with the 1080p results, we see that overall, the RTX 3050 was actually 6% slower than the GTX 1080. So that's a pretty disappointing result in my opinion, especially given the inflated price of the RTX 3050. There was only a small selection of games where the newer Ampere GPU was faster, and while it was much faster in a few instances, it was much slower in many more. We also see that there are just 14 games where the margins were 5% or less in either direction, with 20 where the RTX 3050 was slower by a 10% margin or greater. So overall, in 2022, the GTX 1080 is still the superior product in terms of gaming performance, coming out on top more often than not. Then, if we move to 1440p, things look even better for the aging Pascal GPU. Here we find 22 examples where the RTX 3050 was slower by a 10% margin or greater. That's almost half of the games tested. It's fair to say that the progress at the lower end of the GPU market has been pretty stagnant for the past few generations. I suppose on one hand, you could say that getting two generation old high-end performance at the entry level is good, but then you realize the entry level of the GeForce 30 series is $300 US, not $200 or less, and therefore it quickly becomes a lot less exciting. 
The other issue being that as far as current generation products go, at its current $300 US asking price, the RTX 3050 is getting embarrassed by the RX 6600, given that pricing for the Radeon GPU is down around $260 US, and it typically offers much, much more performance. So realistically, the RTX 3050 should be priced no higher than $220 US, and ideally, I'd say more like $200 US. So had the RTX 3050 been available for $200 US, then that would make it three times cheaper than the GTX 1080 at its original MSRP. And I'd say at that point, it's a decent step forward. But as it stands at just half the price or less than half of the price when compared to the 2017 price drop to $500 US, the RTX 3050 is not only underwhelming when compared to today's competing products from AMD, but it's also underwhelming compared to two generation old Nvidia products. And another way of looking at this is, the GeForce GTX 1080 has managed to last six years as a very usable product. It's certainly not survived as a high class product, but nothing ever does. And I think being very usable is the gold standard for such an old graphics product. So while at half the price, the RTX 3050 might still be a good bit cheaper, I wonder, will you comfortably get six years out of it? I'm not sure on that one. I'm also not that confident, but I am keen to see you again in 2028 for a 50 game benchmark. Until then, the RTX 3050 will remain as the most disappointing Ampere GPU and a complete mystery as to how the green team is able to shift a subpar product at such a premium. And on that note, I am going to end this one here. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbor Unbox community member, then check us out over at Floatplane or Patreon. Sign up to either of those. We'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members, a monthly live stream to myself get together and chat with you guys about the events of the month. And we have behind the scenes content. Tim's building a new studio. He just uploaded another, I think it's the the third behind the scenes video of that whole build process. Plaster's up now and he's about to start painting. So it's pretty exciting and Q&A stuff. So quite a few things there to check out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.